Edutrill is a venture by Acolyte Digital, a US dollar 100 million enterprise with its headquarters in US Texas and offices in major locations like London, New York, and Indian cities like Mumbai, Gurugram, Chennai, etc. Edutrill was incorporated in 2017 and offers a wide range of digital solutions like end-to-end -end hiring, assessment support, learning and development solutions to corporates, universities, job seekers, and students. Our clientele includes top companies like Samsung, Acer, Lenovo, Sydney Talent, Gig Vistas, Licious, and more. I would now take you through the brief profile of Ms. Parul Arora. Parul brings over 14 years of well-rounded experience in talent acquisition, as well as HR generalist functions with global brands like Target, HP, PayPal, and Acolyte Digital. She currently works as the Senior Director, People Success with Symphony Talent, where her role entails strategizing, developing, and implementing employment practices geared towards attracting, retaining, and rewarding employees. She excels in building strong business partnerships, and her consultative approach helps her establish credibility and rapport with operating leaders and stakeholders. Welcome, Parul. We are so happy to have you here with us today. And we would love if you could share your experience and a few words of wisdom with our participants. Over to you. Thank you so much, Mehma. Uh, could you please let me know how much time do I have? I can accordingly go on. Um, so I think uh, 10 to 15 minutes. With 10 to 15 minutes. All right. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having me here and really excited to be talking to each one of you today. Um, first of all, I know it might just be a little challenging, uh, a session after lunch, so I hope you all are with me. If not, I think it uh, would be great to stay connected and, and hear from you know, uh, the leaders who are here today, and we would love to, in fact, take questions as well towards the end. Um, I think before I really get to talk about you know, my story, um, I will take a minute to briefly talk about Symphony Talent and um, you know, why I chose um, to join Symphony Talent, right? So Symphony Talent is a product company that's redefining how employers and talent connect with our headquarter in the New York City and multiple offices across US, Belfast, London, and India. We serve over 600 global clients. I'll also take a quick minute to actually talk about the core values and actually the reason why I chose um, to join Symphony Talent because they resonated with me. So one is celebrate each other. Um, we believe um, in you know, building great relationships and of course, along the way, having fun, which is really essential. The second core value that we have is sharing success. So basically it stands for guiding um, and you know, working alongside our clients and doing things just to make them successful too. Third, um, basically it's focus on talent because people are at the core of all our decisions and all our actions that we take, right? Um, the other one is dare to be different. So basically challenging the status quo. And this was something that really resonated the most with me. And why I'm saying it is because as I go and I talk about my journey in a bit, you will understand that I've actually always tried to do something different, something that I had not done before or something that was outside of my comfort zone um, at the beginning of it. Um, and and uh, the last one that I wanted to talk about, I think I covered celebrate each other, dare to be different, share in success, um, be an open book. It's about being transparent and delivering on commitments. Now I, I will move on to talk about my journey um, and a bit of my personal information. And purely because I think that will help you to you know, understand my story better and learn from it. And, and I hope you can benefit from it too. I come from a very simple family um, and I hail from a city where there were options in terms of you know, professional journey were actually, I wouldn't say limited, I would say zilch. Um, so I, I hail from Priyagraj, which is erstwhile Alhavad, very simple uh, family and where there was a very strong belief system that girls perhaps should get married when they're 18 um, and they should perhaps have kids by the time they're 21, 22, right? And this is something that I'm talking about like 14 years back. Things have certainly you know, changed a lot in the last couple of years. And at that point in time, um, I think the only aim that I had was to ensure that you know, I, I wanted to have an identity of my own. I wanted to you know, see what the world really had to offer to me. And that's how I started to look out 
Um, and my, my first opportunity was with Wipro, which was a very, very different role um, altogether. It was on two operations. But that was my goal at that point in time, because I just wanted to explore the world without even thinking of what I really wanted to do for the um, rest of my life. And um, when I joined Wipro is when I started to introspect um, to see what is it that I really would want to do for the rest of my life or from a professional point of view. And this brings me to my tip number one for you, or my mantra number one is have the journey of self-discovery, right? So when I say self-discovery, it basically involves you spending time to know what is it that you know you are good at what is it that you want to do who you are at the core right your strengths your opportunities you know and what is it that you really want to achieve so i think that's very important and in that journey i realized that i was a people's person and um i really enjoyed um, the company of people learning from each other's background and that's how i started to explore the world in hr I was very lucky to actually get my first job with Target, which is the second largest retail chain in the US. And I started in recruitment. So I used to do a lot of tech hiring at that point in time. And um, um, at that time, I used to have a mentor who was in the HR generalist side. Um, and then one fine day, she reaches out to me um, you know, and says that, hey, I have a role for you on, you know, and, and do you think you would be interested to explore the HR generalist side? And that brings me to my sharing number two, or tip number two is like, be open to opportunities and be open to learning or doing things, um, right? And I remember I instantly said yes to her. And that's how I moved on to the HR generalist function at Target. Um, you know, so after that, of course, you know, HP happened and then I was with eBay PayPal. It was one company at that point in time. Even for eBay, I got a call to actually set up their analytics competency, um, which was again, something I had not done before. And that's how I took the challenge and I said, no, I want to do it. Now, while whatever I've actually talked about, it may sound, wow, you know, good change, good opportunities. But let me tell you, that everybody, everyone actually goes through a set of failures or a set of learnings in that journey as well. So it, 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 let me actually emphasize that you should embrace your failures as well, right? Not only it is a part of the journey, but it is actually essential um, you know, to fail. Because when you fail, you one know that you're trying something new um, and then pausing to reflect on it, taking the learning and moving on. Right. So that's very, very essential. In fact, when I talk about embracing failures, this really reminds me, um, you know, of a great um, episode from this uh, or a great scene from this movie, Dhoni, of our erstwhile Captain Cool. I hope uh, many of you would have seen this movie. Um, can we do like a quick show of hands just to see that you all are with me so far? Before I actually go to talk about which scene I'm talking about, can we do some reactions on Zoom? Okay, I do see a couple of them. Wonderful. All right. Okay, so the scene that I'm talking about, I think there was a match between UV and Dhoni. I think Dhoni does okay, but he doesn't get selected for the next tournament. And he meets his friend with a set of, you know, refreshment sweets to celebrate that day. And he says that, um, you know, there's one thing, his, his friends actually thought that he's gonna be super disappointed that he hasn't gotten selected, but he says, I have learned that what has gotten me so far will not take me to the next level and I don't want to forget this day. So every successful person has gone through those learnings. So please feel free to try different things. If you fail in that process, you are trying, learn from it and move on. I would also want to actually quickly talk about a couple of other things which have really helped me to get a voice on the table. One is, of course, you know, thinking from the end user's perspective, right? So for me, my end user could be the candidates, the hiring managers, you know, my team members or the other stakeholders. For those in technology world, it could be, you know, the end user if they're building on a product, um, right? So always try to think from the customer's end. And that's when, you know, you would be able to do that innovation 
or bring in that interesting idea that you know you can implement so seeing that big picture is really really important the other thing which is important is delivering on commitments and i think that has really helped me a lot because in my journey i've worked very closely with ceos as well so um, if you really say that, hey, I will get back to you by X, Y, Z time, please do make it a point to get back to that person within that time or deliver on it. And for some reason, if you know it is getting delayed, you know, ensure that you do a timely communication. That's the key. Um, also, I think have a voice of your own, right? When I say that, I think this is something which has really helped me. If you are in a meeting and, you know, just because everybody is saying a yes and you feel that, oh, how do I really say no? Because I somehow have a different point of view. Please do pause and ensure that you put your point across. You need to have a voice of your own. And these are a few things which have really, really helped me in my journey. Um, and, and I have tried to keep it very short just to ensure that, you know, I can give you the gist of it and we can perhaps take questions towards the end. But before I actually wrap up um, and I pass it over to Mahima again, I do want to just say one last thing that this is a journey, right? So when you say success, to me, it is a journey. Do not wait to say, hey, only when I reach a particular salary or a Y job title is when I'm going to celebrate. If you have reached thus far, I think that itself calls for a celebration. So do ensure that you take the time out to celebrate be grateful for what you have. And this is the thought that I would like to leave you all with. And over to you, Mahima. I hope I've not taken a lot of time. Um, no, that's absolutely fine. Uh, in fact, Parul, I am sure all of the tips that you have shared, whether it's about self-awareness, embracing yourself, or you know, embracing the failures rather, stepping inside the customer's shoes, commitment, I think all of these tips are absolutely impeccable and they will truly help all the young minds over here to succeed in their career journeys ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your words of wisdom with us. Thank you. Thanks, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I would now like to introduce you all to Mr. Hassan Ahmed, who is the co-founder and CEO of Gig Vista, an alumnus of HCM, uh, SCM HRD, a global fellow in talent management from Wharton, doctoral scholar with ISP, Hassan brings along 20 years of rich experience working with industry giants like Amul, Watanmal Group, GB Foods Africa. He has worked with one of the largest food FMCG organizations in India with a leading African focused FMCG firm and a Spanish multi-local company with business presence in over 50 different countries. He has held head HR roles with Watanmal Group and GB Foods Africa. During his career, he has worked across many sub-functions in human resources in numerous organizations by assisting them in setting up functions for transformation and integration. Hassan comes with a rich experience and expertise in cross-cultural management and has worked extensively on mergers and acquisition, transaction and post-merger and acquisition integration. As an independent consultant, Hassan has advised and consulted many organizations in talent management and human resource strategies. He has coached many senior executives and has conducted career-specific coaching for students in various campuses. In 2020, he co-founded Gig Vistas, a platform that enables companies to tap into underexplored talent category of white collar dick professionals. Welcome, Hassan. It's a pleasure having you with us today. We would really love if you could share your experience and a few words of wisdom with our participants. Over to you. Thank you, Mahima. Uh, it was great listening to you, Parul. Uh, some very valuable points shared by you over there. Uh, let me see if I can uh, elaborate on some of those and build on uh, what you've already shared. Well, okay. So, um, a small introduction about myself. I think a lot of this has already been done by Mahima, so there isn't much for me to introduce uh, about myself. But uh, I want to jog back in my own memory uh, when I first uh, passed out from campus and I was doing my first job. So before I did my first job uh, in management, I was a journalist in my, you know, one of my previous avatars. Right? Um, and uh, so I used to continue writing and uh, just after college, uh, 
you know, we, we were in the middle of, uh, we got, we got campus placement at the time when uh, uh, the Twin Towers came down. So there was a big uh, crisis all over the world and employment opportunities were very um, less. Uh, campuses uh, were, uh, were not very active in terms of hiring. And uh, we learned up some jobs and in that uh, 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 space of reflection, um, we started writing an article which eventually got me and my friend and which eventually got published in Business World uh, way back in 2003 or four, I think. Uh, this was after the effects of uh, the, the Twin Towers had subsided and the market started to boom okay, in terms of hiring. And people were switching jobs like crazy. Yeah. People were changing jobs and uh, companies were complaining that people were changing jobs and what happened to all that loyalty that was there in the previous generations, right? Uh, so we wrote an article on why uh, candidates are nothing but fast moving consumer goods. So why MBAs are nothing but fast moving consumer goods. And uh, uh, the principle there was that it's payback time and all this while uh, companies have been, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, demanding certain way of working uh, and now the independence has started to come. People are getting empowered. Okay. So that was the whole thing and that's the reason why people are changing jobs so often. Um, and we, over the last two decades, it's been more than two decades since we wrote that article. And uh, I can see that there has been a distinct progression in the way uh, people, employees are getting empowered, right? Uh, from a more of a theory X way of management, we are eventually moving to more of a theory Y where, you know, people do work because they want to do work, right? Um, and that's, that's perhaps becoming even more magnified today uh, in the post pandemic world. That said, um, our initial uh, article was also a little bit of pent up uh, frustration because we were in a context where jobs were not coming by, right? Uh, over the years and uh, with some maturity and uh, loss of a lot of hair, um, I have come to realize that, uh, you know, you, you must change jobs uh, if it's for the right reason, right? Uh, payback is not the right reason. Uh, you have to look at why you want to take a switch jobs. Um, I think there is a different way of looking at job change and that is around experiences. Are you adding enough experiences to, not experience, but experiences to your uh, resume, to your CV? And if you're able to do that through multiple projects in your own uh, uh, company, then there is uh, not so much reason to change, okay? Uh, so look at whether your CV value is going up year on year. Right? So are you adding new projects? And this is what I think uh, it is important. Uh, skills are becoming very, very important. Okay? Um, what kind of skills are we adding to our portfolio that has become very important? And that is something that we need to start looking at. And, and to acquire that, if you have to change jobs, to, uh, to build on your skills uh, you know, portfolio if you have to change jobs, then I think that is good. If you can do that in your own company and, uh, and be able to build that portfolio of skills, then that is great. Don't lose out on that opportunity because every time, a lot of time people change jobs uh, because they hope, and I've been in this situation, because they hope that the next job is going to be the solution to all my problems in my current job, right? That's the hope, okay? But every time you change a job, there's a different reality. Right? So that doesn't always work out so bad, right? Um, you should definitely focus on changing jobs. I also think that jobs um, change is not a bad idea because you also improve your network, right? Loyalty today is not so much to company, but it is to professions. Right, uh, it is to yourself, and uh, if you're able to upskill yourself with projects, then stay in the same company. If you're not, uh, find places where you can do that, but don't do it every 
year, every two years. That's not enough for you to acquire uh, a full cycle of implementation experience and acquire skills. Do it between three to five years is still a reasonable time frame for you to acquire skills, get uh, strengthened, right? It's not theoretical understanding of uh, work, but actual actually getting the feedback loop and using the feedback loop to improve your own work experience, right? So th that's what I meant by experiences and not experience, right? Uh, use job change to build your experience in terms of both depth and breadth, um, and that becomes very valuable. Right? Um, and, and over these 20 plus years, yeah, I have, I have worked uh, in HR profession in, in different capacities, hiring people um, and assisting companies hiring people. Uh, that's what we do in Gig Vista today, both in terms of permanent as well as, uh, you know, part-time flexible options that people are looking out for. So over the years, what, what I do understand is that, of course, your, your functional skills are important. Your know-how is important. Uh, what, do you, what else do you need? I mean, when, when you're passing out fresh from the campus, you have very limited of uh, those things. You may have a good degree. You may have some, some understanding on, XP, on, on the uh, subject matters. Uh, but you should also try to see where we can develop opportunities to uh, get micro project experiences, right? And start doing inculcating that into uh, your way of uh, uh, education. Even when you are learning, you should be doing some projects where you can uh, acquire some skills which are uh, useful in the corporate world, right? Uh, then what do companies look for? Predominantly, it's about communication, as I see in a lot of cases, right? So there is an external process, what's visible, there is an internal process in terms of what, how you think. So what you do outside is, uh, is also expressed, uh, it's the express way, right? The express way is your communication, the express way is our behavior. Uh, so all these things become very crucial. So communication is, is definitely a very important skill set that uh, we all need to master, um, both in our native languages and professional languages. Now in India, I think English is the professional language. So we need to acquire that skill set uh, uh, better. But also native languages, not every job needs to be done with uh, requiring English. Right? So I come from an FMCG background. And I know that uh, if I have to sell something in Tamil Nadu, I need to know Tamil very well. So expressing ourselves is very, very important. How I present influence these things become important. Okay. Uh, it includes listening, comprehension, as well as expression. Right? So all these three things, we have to be conscious about it and inculcate this. Um, positivity is something that companies look out for. Uh, I think Parul gave some very good examples about being positive, and I think that's very, very important. How do you in, in demonstrate that uh, you are positive out of failures? How do you demonstrate your ability uh, while you are um, you know, working in your career? Hunger and authenticity. I think these are also very important. How do you demonstrate a desire to, uh, to do things well? Right? It's not about desire to just become successful, but desire to do things well, to meet different um, you know, customer requirements. Right? How do you bring that desire to solve problems? Right? I think that's that's a skill which is very important. How do you uh, define a context in terms of a problem? And then how do you uh, explain your initiatives in terms of solutions to that problem? Right? So this problem solving skill is also very important. We, need, we all need to demonstrate that uh, and companies do definitely look for these. The quality of these aspects is very, very important. Right. So it's not only your functional skills. You may be great at uh, accounting, but uh, the application of it is also very important. Yeah. Um, so, you know, one more topic which I want to also share, and this is partly from my uh, recent uh, consulting experience with one of the Fortune uh, 50 companies on uh, you know, remote working, right? Um, and, you know, remote working has both pros and cons. It has advantages and it has disadvantages, right? So I'm going to focus more on what are the professional advantages for development and what are the professional disadvantages for development and what you could do about these, right? Um, 
one great thing which has happened is that uh, you know before pandemic i think the younger generation was far more technologically agile in 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 consumer uh, on the consumer side of it they consume technology far more uh, in a far better way than uh, i'm afraid to say organizations organizations are still are still living in this uh, in the the ERP world and you know, very strict systems and stuff. Uh, communication has to go through certain very uh, controlled environments. Um, and yet, what are employ how are employees behaving was very different outside, right? They would be chatting on uh, various kinds of video chats. They are communicating on WhatsApp. Uh, they are. Uh, it's more agile. A lot of technology change that has. Uh, that needs to be brought into the companies was actually driven by employees. That's one. That's one perspective I want to bring up in, in this discussion. Right? And post pandemic, I see that tech companies have embraced technology at a much faster pace now. So now they are also embracing a lot of these technologies to be able to work with people. Right? That's a great, great positive. So it's bridged this gap, and people are talking more in similar languages. Okay. Um, it has facilitated uh, democratized, it's actually democratized learning in some way, right? So a lot of companies are now talking more about, okay, how do we leverage e-learning platforms? How do I um, uh, provide people opportunities to learn at their pace? Uh, how do I ensure that um, they are actually focusing on learning and development? And I don't have to chase them every time. What kind of curated learning programs can I provide to employees? So all these things have started um, uh, growing more, and I think uh, pandemic had a role to role to just you know play the catalyst in this space as well. Okay. Um, and now I think it's going to stay because now you're talking about hybrid ways of working, so people are going to do this, and and that means that us as employees, we also need to. Uh, take these uh, steps to ensure that we are upgrading ourselves in various areas. So there is, uh, if we don't, then we kind of lose out in this skills marketplace that the world is going to become. On the downside, I think the social learning aspects have really come down. Right? So they, this is, uh, we lose out on opportunities to interact with people, to learn from managers, to learn from colleagues. Um, this, this is becoming a problem. So. One thing which uh, uh, I would suggest uh, we should all try and do is to identify touch times, however less they are, and leverage that as much as possible. So if you're meeting somebody for uh, 45 minutes uh, in, in, during that month of work, use that really productively, ask questions. And I think Paral also spoke in, in different words. She spoke about self-advocacy to be able to talk and express and let people know about your opinion. I think that those things become very important. You can't be um, uh, seen as somebody who's not participating. Otherwise, you, you will lose out uh, in the visibility uh, that uh, is required today. Right. Um, so the last bit which I want to tell you is that build trust. Right. In a remote context, trust building uh, is a little uh, conscious effort. Right. Uh, in, in groups, maybe you are able to do this anyway, uh, but when you are working remotely, trust building is a conscious effort. I, again, I want to uh, build on what Parul had spoken about. She spoke about, uh, I think again in different words, speed and accuracy. Uh, deliver what you are promising. So build your credibility. Build your credibility by ensuring that you keep people informed about what you are doing, how have you been uh, doing things, and what is accomplished, what is not accomplished. So build credibility by delivering on your promises. And if it's not being delivered, explain why, right? So that becomes very important. And the other one is show concern for others, right? Compassion is hugely important. Um, and in a remote environment, you don't know what kind of issues others are facing all the time, you know, with the pandemic particularly. So concern for people is very important. Demonstrate it and don't be shy about it, right? Uh, yeah, I think that's that's about it from my side. I hope I managed in, in time.
Yeah, thank you so much, Hassan. Thank you for uh, giving such a fresh perspective about job change. And I'm sure all the tips that you have shared, whether it's about building trust, compassion, empowering people, or McGregor's theory X and Y, learning from experiences, skill building, you know, all of this, I'm sure is really going to help all of the future business leaders to take their career decisions and for their uh, career development. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so before I go on and invite our next impeccable leader on board, I would uh, request you all to kindly wait and um, we will be sharing a form uh, for the certificate as well as for the feedback so that you can uh, fill it up and we will deliver your e-certificates right away. Okay, so I would now take the honor of introducing Mr. Amit Arora, CIO Acolyte Digital and CEO and co-founder of Edutrill. Over the last roughly two decades, Amit has worked with several notable firms in the world of information technology, including Trilogy, Technocar Software, and Amazon. He graduated from major universities such as Savitri Bhai Phule Pune University and University of Delhi. Amit's expertise flows in a vast pool of areas like enterprise systems, web skill computing, e-commerce, open source technologies, product management, as well as business development. He has worked in diverse responsibilities, including software delivery, people management, talent acquisition, and operations. He is currently on a mission to revolutionize academics and professional chances for worthy students and job seekers through a unique gamified and AI-driven assessment and learning platform, Edutrill, in addition to being a pioneer in the field of IT. Welcome, Amit. We are extremely excited to have you with us today, and we would love if you could share your experience and few words of wisdom with our participants. Over to you. Yeah, thank you, Mahima, for that introduction. And uh, first of all, a pleasure to be uh, interacting with this group today. And uh, completely echo and agree with all the thoughts which Parul and Hassan have shared. I think uh, very, very important for all of us to be open to opportunities when they knock at our door and be able to sense which is the right opportunity to take forward quickly. And then also be open, uh, be able to communicate effectively uh, and show compassion. So completely agree with uh, what both the esteemed panelists have shared before me. So uh, what I'll do is uh, give you a brief background about myself. Uh, Mahima has covered the intro, but uh, a perspective which uh, will help you relate better with some of the tips uh, which I plan to share uh, very soon. So I also come from a, a middle-class family. Uh, I actually come from a business family. So services uh, and professional world was a new realm for us uh, because in a business family, if any of you are from that, you would understand it's a generational thing. If your parents have done business, uh, it's natural to expect that you will also follow their footsteps and go there. So in fact, I was the first in my family to be entering the professional world and uh, which essentially meant uh, that I did not have that mentorship uh, at home from a professional world perspective. Uh, yes, I had a good uh, upbringing, a very great upbringing uh, from my family, from my friends getting tips. But uh, when I was entering the industry, it was essentially from scratch. Uh, I am a techie by education, uh, did my, uh, both my bachelor's as well as my master's in computer science. But as fate would have it, uh, from the very start of my career, I was thrusted into management roles uh, and uh, thankful to my first company, Trilogy, where I started my career. And most of the tips which I've learned uh, are actually from there. Uh, and to help you with that, what I will do is I'll probably quickly share my screen uh, because I have captured my thoughts. I hope you are able to see my screen now. Yes, Amit. And uh, these are a set of seven tips or seven mantras, which I plan to practice every day. Uh, and I hope these are going to be useful for each of you. Uh, the number one mantra, uh, and I think this is my recommendation to everyone is around self-belief. And self-belief, not just from the perspective of having a good job or a good career, but uh, self-belief in trying to make a change in the world. So uh, we all have a lot of inherent power within ourselves. And we have to believe that we are going to be the change maker. There are a lot of new challenges which the world is facing. 
and we are going to be one of the people who is going to solve the problems so i think this is the most important thing which i would recommend that each of you embrace believe in yourself and tackle any problem that you face uh, with that belief in mind now the next step uh, which i would like to share is around the right attitude uh, both parul and hasan have talked about it uh, how we approach a problem that comes to us whether it's the knowledge whether it's the skills whether it's the experience all of those are good to have but until and unless we have a positive attitude towards our work towards what we want to accomplish and towards what we want to solve it's not going to happen in fact recently also uh, we did a survey on linkedin uh, around the exact same topic uh, to get thoughts from other leaders and other uh, professionals in the industry on what they think is the most important thing to be successful at work and uh, not surprisingly even as part of that survey everybody talked about the attitude that a person has and uh, how it determines the overall success you will have in your career so always charge in with a very positive attitude uh, always uh, try to solve the problems without shrugging uh, them away uh, this is the second uh, most important advice uh, which i have for everyone uh, as humans we all like to think very good of ourselves and that's right uh, to do uh, we all have a unique set of skills unique set of experiences and accomplishments and it's important to have that self belief which i talked about and think of ourselves as a rock star but the reality of life is a team will always accomplish a lot more than an individual and hence while it's good to be a rock star and it's important to be a rock star but it's always best to be a rock star in a be in a band in other words what i'm trying to imply over here is your team player skills are probably going to take you a far more ahead in your career as opposed to your individual capabilities and abilities so always keep that in mind in fact this is one thing which we are very particular about when setting up our teams and uh, hiring anybody for our teams uh, while we do evaluate each individuals aptitude and attitude as well but most importantly we check how good a team player they would be when they join us the next important thing take bold bets do not be complacent do not try to focus on things as just a 9 to 5 thing that i have to get my job done get my paycheck if you want to be successful in your career you want to have great growth always be ready to experiment and as both parul and hasan called out everyone who has been successful for one success they must have had 100 failures behind the scenes and it's okay to fail and as parul said sometimes it's also important to fail because that's how we learn and this is an important thing that we all have to be ready to come out of our comfort zone place our bets on things there would be certain assignments given to you there would be certain tasks given to you you don't know anything about it but go in with confidence experiment bring new ideas to the table uh, as has already been called out the next important thing is our attitude towards attitude towards learning we should be prepared to learn every day uh, as uh, hasan also called out earlier the industry is moving very very fast uh, there is something new coming practically every day and not just in our own industry or function where we are focusing but even outside those realms so to be successful this is one of the more uh, most important things which is our attitude towards continuing to learn and evolve ourselves and be a better professional every day and the other tip related to this is we should be open to learn from everyone i think many people make a mistake that they are looking for mentors or seniors or just role models and celebrities and they try to learn from that my advice there is tons to learn from practically everyone who is around us irrespective what their experience level is in fact in my own personal experience i think it's the fresh talent from whom you can learn the most because they come with a lot of ideas they come with a lot of energy and hence as a practice every year i try to make it a, uh, a habit of interacting with a lot of freshers who keep joining our teams uh, and keep picking tips from them as well 
So my advice, be ready to learn every day and be ready to learn from everyone around you. The next one is a very simple tip, uh, which has helped me uh, get a sense of satisfaction for every day's work that I do. And that's around the fact that accomplishment gives power. And if you look at the habits of any successful leaders, any successful professionals, you will find one thing common across most of them. They would all recommend to you that start a day with a task completed and accomplished. The task could be very small, doesn't matter. But very first thing in the morning, try to achieve something. And once you know that you have knocked off something uh, and it's off your plate, it will give you a lot more motivation, a lot more energy to power through the day and not get overburdened by all the things which you are supposed to accomplish uh, during the day. Another important thing which has helped me and multiple other successful leaders is around the prioritization. Always prioritize the things which are most important for your work, for your career, for your family at the time of the day, which is most productive for you. Many people make the mistake of taking on critical tasks or things which require full attention at a time when they are not at their full capacity in terms of either the brain being open or the creative juice is flowing. So each individual has their own cycle, body cycles. We all know what is the most productive time for us. If you were to schedule the most important task around that time, trust me, uh, the amount of time it will take you to complete those would be a lot, lot less. And the overall things which you will be able to accomplish during the day would be a lot more. And lastly, and uh, equally importantly, never say it's not my job. One of the mistakes I have seen many people make is saying that I belong to the tech function, marketing is not my responsibility. Or I belong to the business development function, talent acquisition is not my responsibility. Yes, it's fine to say so that I may not have the necessary skills to be very accomplished in that area. But if you truly want to be successful, if you truly want to grow, always be open to learn cross-functional responsibilities and contribute towards those. So never say it's not my job. Absolutely call it out to your managers, to your leaders that you may not have the expertise in that area, but also show the attitude and the confidence and the desire to learn and help the organization, help your team, even across areas which you may not have an expertise on. So I think these are the main tips which I personally follow on a day-to-day -day basis. And I encourage all my team members and my direct reports also to follow. And uh, I hope uh, that you will also benefit out of this. So with that said, uh, let's get started. And uh, here's wishing everyone a very happy and successful career. Back to you, Mahima. Thank you so much, Amit. I am sure all of these tips that you have shared, whether it's about positive attitude, team player skills, taking bold bets, continuous learning, all of these I'm sure is really going to help all the future business leaders over here in shaping a bright and successful career. I would now like to thank all the esteemed panelists for sharing your words of wisdom with the young minds. And before we move on to the Q&A session, I would take a moment to recognize and appreciate all of our technology techathon participants. So uh, sort of, I would request you to share the screen. So uh, we had conducted this technology techathon uh, two months back, and we were surprised to see that there were more than 10,000 participants who had performed. And out of all of these participants, there were uh, a lot of top performers like GN Raju, Dugalya, Kirti, Suinika, Somdatta, Chandragiri, Nagumali, Sushmita, Aditya, and Baresai Channa. Along with that, there were a lot of participants who were selected and were shortlisted for various rounds of interviews at various organizations like Symphony Talent, Eduthral, Accolade Digital, and more. I would now open the forum to a Q&A session. So I request all of you to please type your uh, questions in the chat box. So the first question is, 
how to be more productive considering the time management tricks? So this is an open question. Um, Hassan, would you like to take this question? Sure. So, yeah, yeah. So I think time management, uh, this is something that we have to grapple with all the time. Um, that's why it's so crucial anyway. Uh, the, the, there are tools available. You have the uh, high uh, urgent versus important matrix, right? So you, you know, you classify your um, tasks based on what is most urgent, or what is important, which is urgent and important, obviously consumes most of your time. What is urgent and uh, not so important will still consume time because it is urgent. And uh, what is important uh, is something that we need to focus on because if we don't focus on what is important, then that will all fall into becoming urgent. And then you have too many urgent things to do. And that's when we get stressed out. Okay. So time management is, is a little bit about using these kind of tools to prioritize things. Um, it's also a little bit about self-discipline, right? So you need to first manage yourself better. I think uh, I mean, spoke about that. You need to manage yourself first and then manage everything around you. If you do not manage yourself well, then you will not have the time to do things that are important. You know? so, uh, so the other aspect is really about managing yourself. Make sure you have time. Make sure you are sufficiently energized. Make sure you do things which give you joy and energy, whether it is coming from your family, from your friends, uh, or from uh, your own uh, introspection and reflection. So two things, one is managing work yourself. The other is tools to use to prioritize and do work better. Okay. Thank you so much, Hassan. Uh, the next question is, COVID-19 has shook the entire world for almost two years. How should we prepare ourselves to deal with such unprecedented situations? What are the key skills one should have to be successful in this new normal? So this is again an open question. Uh, Amit, would you like to answer the question first? Yeah, sure, Mahima. Uh, I think uh, Hassan did uh, allude to portions of uh, this as, uh, as part of his uh, uh, tips which he shared with the group. Uh, I think the most important thing is very effective communication and touch point uh, with your fellow stakeholders. Now, the stakeholders could be your team members, they could be your managers, they could be your teachers if you're still a student. But the most important thing is effective communication and regular communication. Uh, because uh, as Hassan called out, in a physical world, we all had the advantage of being in front of each other, being able to see each other and understand each other's body language. But in a completely remote world, if you're not communicating, that factor of trust, which again Hassan and Parul talked about, uh, it takes uh, a back seat. Uh, and during the last two years, in fact, we have onboarded more than 1,000 people at Acolyte. Uh, and uh, this has been one of the most critical things where the entire leadership team has focused. Uh, because in a normal scenario, we could have had those team members in conference rooms with us, uh, in uh, all hands with us. So I think the most important thing is effective communication uh, across the board. And then also the need to stay mentally positive. Because with so much negativity around us, uh, with news coming in every day about uh, the cases rising, about new variants coming, the deaths which are happening, uh, it's very natural for the human brain to get bogged down. So as leaders or even as team members, the more you can do to spread positivity in your environments, that's going to go a long way in not just you accomplishing the best out of your work, but also helping your overall team and the organization do the best. So according to me, these are two critical things which need to be done. But I uh, would love to hear thoughts from Parul and Hassan as well. Yeah. Thanks, Amit. Absolutely. Parul, we would love to hear your uh, views also on the topic. Sure, sure, Mahima. Thank you. I think, Amit, you've kind of you know, covered it all, really, what I can say. So building trust, and this is something that I very often call out to all our new joinees, that don't let this world, virtual world be like a deterrent for you to build relationships. So... If you were in the office and if you were joining us in the office, you would spend the time to have like a coffee chat, um, you know, which is more of an informal conversation, just learning about each other's background. I very strongly urge all our new joinees to actually take the first one or two weeks when they're settling in to spend that time with their team members to build stronger partnerships. And of course, we've talked about, you know, communicating, 
because that's how you really build trust. So in fact, I would say that you should over communicate during these times because you know everybody is uh, working virtually. No one knows what you're really doing. So talking about it, being vocal about it, I think that's the key um, because that's how you will be able to build trust and credibility you know, with your employer. I think that's super important. Wonderful. Thank you, Parul. Hassan, we would like to hear your opinion as well on the same. Yeah, so um, I'm sorry, I was for a moment distracted. Can you help me with the question again? Yes. So uh, the question is COVID-19 has shook yeah. the entire world for almost two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got, it, got it. So yeah, we already spoke about this uh, 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 in the previous uh, session. Uh, so it will just be re-emphasizing re these things again. But in addition, what I would also say is that uh, focus on your own skill development. Right? Uh, use this opportunity to uh, to find skills that are important uh, for you to uh, develop on, right? And try and do this uh, at your own time, okay? Um, there are advantages to, uh, to working remotely. You have more flexibility in your schedule. Uh, you don't commute uh, so much, right? So you save some amount of time. Hopefully, it's not true for everybody because some companies um, the work also goes up right? because you're all working remotely. You can't just walk across and close a discussion. So if you get the opportunity, try to uh, uh, use this to develop yourself a little bit more uh, through, uh, through various tools. Right? That would be the only additional bit. I think everything else is already covered. Okay. Thank you so much, Hassan. The next question is, what is the key to balance between your personal and professional life? So, Parul, would you like to answer this question? Sure, I can take this up my mind. Like, this is one thing that I hear very often. I, I remember when, you know, COVID had just begun as part of the various surveys that I conducted, you know, at Symphony Talent. This was something that was very evident that emerged out from the surveys that, you know, your professional personal life or the lines between personal and professional world had blurred. Um, so I, I think uh, one thing which is very important is to have your boundaries, right, and be vocal about it, right. So basically talking about that this is the time that you would be stepping aside, I think setting that expectation is really important. And at that point in time, do make it a point to keep your phone aside, right, because even if you've stepped aside, but you're constantly checking your phone and your emails at that point in time, you are not being able to, you know, really enjoy that time, right? So do invest in that. In addition to this, I think um, at times, even after, you know, uh, basically talking about this internally when employees had reached out to me, you know, last year of saying that they were still struggling. I think what we have done at Symphony Talent is to basically have like a quiet time. So, for example, between 5 to 6.30, that is like a quiet time where people usually do not call each other until there's something really critical. And I think from the org perspective, that is something which has really helped us. But I, I personally, I'm a firm believer of, you know, empowering people by saying that they should choose and decide that time. What is that time that speaks to them and they want to really step aside from work. But I think um, having those boundaries, um, taking the phone or laptop aside at that point in time and indulging in something that brings you joy, I think is, is critical in my view. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Parul. The next question is how to pick a skill and pursue it as a career when you are average at various skills? This question has been asked by Ashish. And uh, Hassan, would you like to take the question? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I was just checking if I was on mute by any chance. Yes, so on this, uh, look, I think uh, there are advantages of being a master at one skill. There are disadvantages as well, right? So uh, that's, that's life. We have advantages and disadvantages to everything. Okay, um, you could look at uh, having uh, being average in multiple skills also as an advantage, depending upon what you mean by average. I mean, I mean that you're good at it, but you're not excellent. At it, okay, so if it's something like that and you are good at a couple of things, then that is your advantage as well. Right? Uh, you may not have people who would, um, you know, let's take GMAT tests, for example. 
there are people who would have high percentile on maths. There are people who would have high percentile on English, right? But an overall GMAT score is high, particularly high for people who have got both elements of uh, quant as well as uh, language, right? So that, that's how it works. So maybe there is an advantage uh, to have a few good skills uh, in, in your pocket. Um, but having said that, you know, what, what the world is also moving towards is a, a T-shaped manager. Right? So we've been speaking about this T-shaped manager who's good in a couple of things, but has depth in one. And if you're starting off at, uh, at, at the early stage and you are, okay, average in a few skills, that's okay. And I think that's perfectly fine. Uh, what you need to do is as you work, you need to figure out, okay, which of these I want to get better depth, right? Uh, and that's what you can do. And uh, one way of looking at it is think of, I don't know if you've been, if you guys are familiar in the audience of this word called Ikigai, uh, is to find your core purpose, right? And if you found things which you enjoy doing, things that you're good at, and thing which will also pay you money for doing that job, and perhaps that's the thing where you want to build your deep expertise while you know a few other things. And you can acquire this over a period of time. You don't have to start with depth in the beginning. Nobody has that. You have to work for it. Thank you so much, Hassan. And I completely agree uh, what you have said about the Ikigai as well. I think everyone should read that book. It's an amazing book to read. So thank you so much. Uh, the next question is how to handle professional dilemmas and what are your thoughts about emotional intelligence? Uh, this has been asked by Sonali Mehta. Uh, Amit, would you like to take the question? Yeah, sure, Mehma. Uh, in fact, uh, this brings up one of the most important topics, which I'm personally also very passionate about, which is emotional intelligence. Uh, in fact, uh, there are many views about it, uh, but my personal view uh, to be successful in career, in fact, perhaps emotional quotient even trumps your intelligence uh, and IQ. And uh, uh, there are so many scenarios. Uh, and this also alludes to some of the things which I talked about earlier in the session, which is about you can accomplish a lot more as a team rather than just as an individual. And to be successful in a team, the most important thing is we being able to understand each other's emotions and be able to deal with that. Uh, what I don't mean by that is that you always be nice uh, or you be try to just please people. No, that's not what it means to be a good team player. What it means is to place yourself in the shoes of the other person. And as Paul said, if there is a viewpoint which you have, which is differing from the team, absolutely put it, but try to put it in a way which does not hurt the other person across. So there are uh, certain tips around it. Uh, on how to communicate effectively, how to show empathy towards others. But uh, my personal view, uh, I think the importance of EQ in the industry is perhaps even more than your IQ. And uh, unfortunately, this is not an area where a lot of emphasis is paid uh, in our schools, in our colleges. Uh, but I hope uh, because over the last few decades, I've seen our curriculum in, uh, in the academic institutes change. And I do hope and wish uh, the necessary authorities would take action. Uh, but uh, irrespective, I would encourage everyone to read about this subject uh, on EQ uh, because uh, it is a very, very critical skill to have uh, to be very successful in the industry. Yeah, thank you so much, Amit. It's absolutely true that it's uh, extremely vital to have the right balance of EQ and IQ to succeed in not only the professional life, but also the personal life. So uh, I would now move on to the next question. The next question uh, is, what are your views about switching fields after bachelors? Can a person from a tech background get into management domains like HR, marketing, finance, or operations? Uh, this has been asked by Ankit Kumar. And uh, Parul, I would request you to please take this question. Sure, Mayama. This is something I, I get uh, this question pretty often you know, uh, from people. In my view, the answer is absolutely. Uh, you know, so in fact, I've hired a lot of recruiters who came from a tech background. So their bachelor's degree was, you know, they either came from BTech or BE, and they were wonderful recruiters because they understood technology, 
um, you know, so it was much easier for them, in fact, uh, you know, to, to understand, to build that connection, even with the hiring managers or the candidates that they were hiring. Even at the leadership roles, I've, I've seen, you know, leaders who've moved from tech field to tele taking, you know, roles in HR and I've, they've done wonderfully well. So if that is something that brings you joy and that is something you really enjoy, I would say by all means. But sooner you do that self-discovery that I talked about initially during my conversation, the better it is uh, for you. But um, I would still say that better late than, uh, you know, uh, never doing it. Uh, but yes, absolutely, by all means is what I can say. Thanks a lot, Parul. Uh, I'm sure uh, you have cleared a uh, dilemma of a lot of uh, the participants, students who have been, uh, you know, dealing with this uh, um, challenge of, you know, how should they go about their future? So thank you so much. The next question is, what according to you are the top three, five things that one should prioritize in one's life from an early age, as in when we pass out of our universities or in general in our professional journey to move towards a successful career? My question is to Mr. Hassan. So Hassan Minakshi has asked this question to you. Thank you. I was, in fact, just reading the same question. Lots of interesting questions coming up in the chat, by the way. So thank you for uh, bringing these up. Um, I don't know if there's an easy answer to this, uh, but let me uh, tell you what I think, what comes to my mind for sure. Okay. Um, the top early things that you should focus on is don't define success based on what the society says. Right. Um, keep that aside. Okay, look at uh, look at what you, what what is it that you want to do. Think about it. Yeah? And you will not get the answers. It's okay. People at forty or so are trying to figure out what is it that they want to do. Right? Really, what 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 is it that they want to do? They know they probably in a career. So you don't have to stress yourself on that. But try not to define uh, success based on what the society is telling you to do. Okay, that's number one. The second is then you see what is it that you would like to do? What is it that you're good at? Give yourself time, pursue things that, that excite you, that make you happy, that you, uh, that you enjoy doing, learning and working in, okay? Uh, and don't worry how, about how these things will work out in the future, right? Uh, if you've heard Steve Jobs' famous uh, uh, speech I think in, in one of the US universities, he said he says that don't worry about the dots and how they will connect. Yeah, they will connect by themselves in the future. Right. So pick up things that you like to do. Um, uh, don't define success based on what the society tells you to define success as. Maybe success means to you uh, having a very good family to bring up children in, 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 in a certain way. Maybe success means something else to you. So reflect on that, and that will ease the pressure on you as well. Financial independence is important, okay? I'm not saying uh, discount that. You have to have some level of financial independence. So work towards that, that's number three, right? Don't uh, put it aside. We are not here to become saints, all of us at least are not, okay? So pick up that. Uh, I think these are things which are very important. If you are not able to work towards a certain level of financial independence, by financial independence, I don't mean being the rich, right? I, and I have financial independence is also a lot to do with means, right? Uh, you have to learn to live uh, in a way that you have abundance, right? So abundance comes not because you have a huge amount of wealth. Uh, abundance is also about learning to be uh, able to live with the means that you have. Right? You should always have enough to do things that you like to do. Right? But that doesn't mean we want to do everything and buy jets and stuff. Okay? So these are three things which, I, which come to my mind. Uh, don't uh, let society define success. Right? Pursue your passion. Figure out what is it that you want to do. Do things which you enjoy doing. Uh, be realistic, finally, about financial independence, right? Uh, pick up jobs because uh, just because I want to be, let's say, um, a songwriter uh, in uh, Urdu and I don't have a market which is going to pay me that, it's not going to give me financial independence. 
I have to figure out things which is going to give me financial independence. So these are three things which you should look at. Uh, there is one last one which I would recommend for sure. Uh, and that is we all do health checkups. And I mean, you, most of this audience is very young, so probably they haven't. But after a certain age, we recommend that you do health checkups periodically. Like, likewise, you should do career checkups. Right. Every few years, do a career checkup. Find somebody who can give you advice on how you are placed. Right? What is it that you want to do? Have this kind of conversation. It's been missing uh, from our uh, corporate world for a long time. Thank you, Hassan. Um, those were wonderful tips. Uh, the next question is from Pankaj. He has written, uh, thank you for sharing wonderful tips. My question is more related to the great resignation we are now facing. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? Is it going to stay? And what should small companies do to overcome this situation? So, uh, Amit, would you like to take this question? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Naima. And uh, great question, Pankaj. Uh, uh, yeah, as we all know, right now, the reality of life is that it's a very crazy market out there for talent at the moment. And uh, personally, I hope uh, this churn gets completed very soon. Because uh, yes, at the moment, there is a lot of demand in the market. The companies are fighting with each other. There is a price battle happening. While that good to feel as an individual that, hey, I'm in demand, but uh, the reality is not such a sustainable thing. And uh, honestly, what we also don't want is that this leads to an overindulgence by the companies of uh, paying crazy salaries uh, at the moment. And then when things start tightening up from a budget perspective, then they're taking drastic measures. Uh, because as an individual, that's a worse thing to deal with, uh, reaching an inflated salary and then being asked to come down as opposed to having a good hike uh, year over year. So yes, right now uh, the reality is like that, but uh, personally, I think this is not going to last for too long because uh, at the end of the day, each company has to be physically, fiscally responsible. They have to meet their finances work. They have to meet their top line. They have to meet their bottom line. So sooner or later, every company is going to hit that threshold beyond which they won't be able to go. And that's when they will start cutting the flag. Uh, Overinflated salaries, individuals who were hired at much higher rates uh, and not adding that value would perhaps be the first one they would target. Of course, at the same time, there are a lot of deserving candidates uh, who perhaps were not getting their due in the market. So it's certainly a very good boon uh, of uh, upgrading them and getting them at par with uh, what their skills and their expertise uh, demands. But uh, uh, now coming to the second part of the question, what should uh, smaller companies do? Uh, of course, in the current market, the brand value and the purchasing power of the bigger companies does put them at a certain advantage. But I think the most important thing which small companies can do is build an awesome culture of learning, growth, and respect for their team members. In fact, uh, not only now, I think that's one of the key ingredients which most successful companies which have started small have embraced to enable their growth. Because yes, money is one uh, important factor. Hassan did talk about being uh, financially independent. Uh, and that's a very important thing uh, because that gives you your confidence, your self-belief, but at the same time, uh, as times are changing, I think people are also becoming very, very conscious about getting satisfaction out of what they do, getting recognized for their work. And I think this is where the small companies can really do much, much better than the larger companies, because with a smaller employee base, the chances of having those one-on-one -on -one connects, being able to understand each and every employee are much higher, which the larger companies and the larger brands uh, would find more difficult to regulate. Absolutely, Amit. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. Now, before I move on to the further questions, I would request all the participants to kindly check the chat box and uh, make sure that they are filling up the feedback and the certificate form for us to deliver their e-certificates. Now, going on to the next question, what do you think on smart work versus hard work in this era? as many times working as per one's principle in both of these are not reachable to success. Great question, Jyoti. Uh, Parul, would you like to take this question? Thank you, Mahima. Very interesting one. And uh, in my view, I think when you start on with your career, 
uh, there's no shortcut to really hard work, right? When you have just begun your career, I think it's really important that you're given those, even if, you know, those extra hours just to ensure you understand, um, you know, and become like a subject matter expert. But I think over a period of time, once you have gained experience, I think you should be a smart worker of figuring out ways how you can do that thing sooner um, is, is what I can really say. So I think it has to be a combination. Leveraging both is important at the right point in time is what I would share. But I think I would, in fact, love to hear views from Hassan and Amit on this as well. Yeah, so, you know, another way of looking at it is that if you have to do smart work, you have to do hard work first. Right. So you have to figure out through hard work how to do it uh, in a better way. Right. So I think the starting point is hard work. Um, there is a, well, this debate has been going on for a long and it will probably continue till cows come home. But that, and that's my view. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I, I completely agree with both Parul and Hassan that both are equally important. Uh, but my personal philosophy has always been towards more smart work. Uh, from my very start of my even education, I've always uh, tried to hack things ethically, trying to figure out easier ways to get things done fast and better. So I'm a firm believer in smart work. And what that also enables me to do is if you are able to work smart and save time for yourself. That means it gives you back that time where you can even work harder. And in fact, uh, as you grow up in your career, the demands from you will keep going up. And the only way you can do it is use smart work and let that pave the path for you to do the hard work. Absolutely. Okay, then there's one question which we have been receiving quite a lot. So the question is how to answer the question of why should we hire you? And I think all we would love to hear uh, the views of all our panelists on this question. So uh, Parul, would you like to go first? Sure, Maiva. I usually don't ask this question during the interviews that I take, but uh, more than happy to kind of share my opinion on this. So um, I think in my view, it's important that you know, when you're asked this question, do take it a point to, you know, showcase, um, you know, what you can really offer uh, or what skill set you really have, which means that first, I think you should, in fact, look at the job description very closely to understand what the organization is looking for and then try to tie in your experience with that and then answer accordingly. At the end, you might of course, I want to say, because this is not just one way of, you know, why the organization should hire you, but you should also look at the other way to say um, that I also feel that with the opportunity that, you know, the company has, it will help me learn and enhance my skills as well, because it's always a relationship. So um, this is what my view is um, on this particular question. Okay, thank you, uh, Amit. Yeah, sure, Mahima. And uh, uh, I think uh, when uh, somebody asked you this question, uh, or if I were in uh, in those their shoes, what I would want to see is your confidence and your self belief. Uh, yes, we, as part of the interview, we would try to evaluate your functional skills, your technical skills, depending on the role we are hiring you for. But most importantly, we want to see whether you believe in yourself, whether you have the right attitude. And uh, so if you can formulate your response to this question, which reflects these attributes back to the interviewer, uh, personally, that's how I would answer this question if I get asked, or if I was asking, this is what I would expect uh, from the uh, interviewee. Okay, thank you, Amit. Hasan? Yeah, so what I recommend to people is to do a SWOT analysis on themselves. Right. So start with what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, what are, your, what are the opportunities that you see for yourself, what sets you can see for yourself. Do this SWOT analysis on your own self. Right? Uh, if you spend some time thinking about yourself, then you will be in a much better position to explain why you think you should be hired. Or at least put on table what you're good at and let them decide if they want to hire you. Right? Uh, so self-reflection is, is, is a starting step. Uh, and that SWOT analysis will definitely help uh, bring clarity to what you can bring to the table and then communicate that. Um, it also draws on my point of self-advocacy. Uh, you should be able to explain why you think you are good at something. 
this is uh, going to become important. Many people um, in our country uh, are shy of doing that. They don't think it is appropriate to talk about what, uh, and I'm definitely one of those, right? So I'm trying to change uh, this myself, and I, I would suggest that for everyone. So. Thanks, Hassan. Uh, so we have been uh, over flooded with a lot of questions. Uh, I'm sure the participants are thoroughly enjoying the session, but due to the deposit of time, we would not be able to take any further questions, but uh, we will make sure uh, that we send across all of these questions to Hassan uh, Parul as well as Amit, and we will get back to the participants with the answers. So I would like to thank Parul, Hassan and Amit for being a part of this session today and for sharing their rich experience, knowledge and words of wisdom with future business leaders to prosper and excel in their careers. I am uh, I'm sure uh, the students would have found uh, this uh, session extremely insightful and we really, really look forward to more such enriching sessions in the times to come. And uh, before we close the session off, uh, I would just like to inform all the pa participants that we have been running a lot of ongoing hiring contests right now. So you can simply scan the code on your screen and you can um, get started and you can participate in a lot of the job opportunities. Sort of, I would request you to uh, move to the previous slide. We also have uh, a contest running right now, which is MBA champion. Uh, this is for the management students. So you have the opportunity to get a lot of jobs, um, recognition, as well as a lot of prizes worth 10 lakh rupees. So again, I would request all of you to participate. You can simply scan the code and uh, uh, participate. And uh, lastly, I would like to thank all the participants for showing such enthusiasm for this industry interaction session. And uh, lastly, again, I would just request you to fill up the feedback form and the certificate form uh, shared. Thank you so much. Um, thank, thank you. I have uh, one thing to call out for all the participants. I know I could see a lot of questions, very interesting ones, in fact. Um, I would urge each one of uh, you, in fact, on the call to please uh, connect on LinkedIn as well. And uh, let, let's try and find opportunities to stay connected. And I, I'm sure, and I'm speaking Hassan and Amit on your behalf as well. I'm sure they'll enjoy it too. You know, um, so, so let's do that. Um, we are pretty active um, on LinkedIn too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Parul. And I completely echo your uh, words that... Uh, a really insightful set of questions asked, uh, and we hope uh, that uh, whatever tips uh, Parul Hassan and I could share from our own experiences would be helpful for each of you in your career. And uh, feel free to reach out to us if you have any more questions, any more queries. I think uh, as people who have learned from our leaders in the past, uh, I think all of us would be super happy to share our experiences and uh, be able to pass on that knowledge and expertise and help create the next set of leaders uh, for our country and for the world. So thank you all. Uh, been a real pleasure interacting with you. Thank you. Thank you, Hassan. Thank you, Amit. And thanks, Fahima. Thank you so much, Farul, Hassan, Amit. It was uh, wonderful having you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Good day, everyone. Thank you.